But I, I just want you to at least see what we're talking about here. In Revelation chapter 9, look at verse number 3. The Bible says, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth had power. And a little bit outside the scope, but this is, Revelation 9 is God's wrath coming out. Okay, so this is in this event of God pouring out his wrath. And these locusts come up, and it says, The shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. Well, that's interesting because in Joel 2, it said the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Look at this. And they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron. Well, that would explain why they could fall upon the sword and not be wounded also. If they had these breastplates of iron... That's protecting them. And then look at this. It says, And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And in Joel, it was talking about their sound being like the sound of uh, like a fire devouring stubble. And as a strong people set in array, it's that same sound of like this great multitude. And then it says, and they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they're locusts. So as they come and destroy, locusts will eat of the fruit of the land, of the, of the vegetation, of your crops, right? Well, the great people that come, it says, a fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as a garden of Eden before them. So you've got this great land before them, lush, bountiful, and behind them a desolate wilderness. And when a swarm of locusts comes through, that's the type of destruction that you're going to see coming through that. And then we talk about them being able to climb the walls and get in at the windows and everything else. I think it's pretty compelling. We're looking at that. It's in the right time frame. We're talking about the day of the Lord. We're talking about God's wrath being poured out. I don't know. I just threw that in there. I probably shouldn't have even covered that at all because we've got so much material with just the day of the Lord. But this is that same time frame. So take that or leave it. That's a little nugget. Let's keep going in Joel 2. Verse 31, the Bible says, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. We're going to flip over to Joel chapter 3. But I think we could easily tie, now we've had all these references, we had references in Joel, we had references in Isaiah about the sun and moon being darkened. Well, Matthew 24, the Bible says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her life, light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Why do I make such a big deal about this even to this point? Because we could tie Matthew 24 and we could use terminology like tribulation and then see that the day of the Lord comes after the tribulation. So if all these other passages are saying the sun's going to be darkened, the moon's not going to give her light, the stars are going to fall from heaven, and saying this is the day of the Lord. Okay, that signifies the day of the Lord. No doubt about it. All these references, we're going to still see some more. That's the day of the Lord. Well, if Matthew 24 is referencing the same thing, it must be referencing the day of the Lord. I mean, that's what it's referring to. It doesn't have to say the day of the Lord, but when it gives you the event that happens at the day of the Lord, that's where it lines up. Yeah. That event happens after the tribulation. And see, Matthew 24 is where we're going to get that term tribulation or great tribulation from anyways. But then people who are pre-trib don't want to go to that as the timing of the tribulation. Because then you've got a problem with it's saying after the tribulation is when the elect are gathered together by the angels. And when they are harvested and when the angels are reaping in their sickles. Well, I mean, that can't be because we know, we know that the tribulation, you know, we're raptured out before. We know that. But well, how do you know that? And be careful. Look, you be careful. It's easy to point out other people and say, oh, yeah, it's funny that because they, they say we know it. Be careful what you say, well, we know this to be true, and dismiss something that you might be hearing from the Bible 
ask yourself, well, why do I know this to be true? Everybody challenge. I mean, we should all be able to be mature enough to challenge ourselves and say, hold on a second, though. My presupposition is that, well, we know it has to be before. Well, why? Why? Yeah. It, you better be able to prove that to yourself. If you can't, then you better study that out. Yeah. Before you start building your foundation on things you don't know very well. So if you hear an argument like they say, well, that can't have. Of course that can't be the rapture because we know the rapture is the fortune. Well, do you? Yeah. 